Nice. Mm. Now, one of the things that I was kind of thinking about, particularly with regards to your playing, is, is the kind of idea of dynamics. And specifically, like, you, you have a quite wide dynamic range in general. I think that you can get quite loud and quite quiet and intimate. But because of the way that you play, um, there's a lot of uh, kind of dynamic variety within, let's say, like an extreme gesture. So you'll be doing like a quite intense gesture, but because of the way you're holding the sticks or because of the way you're playing, some of those notes happen to fall under that, let's say like you're playing high intensity, but then there's like this quiet stuff that's part of it because of the way that you're playing. Like, I, that's one of the things that kind of occurred to me. Like, I don't know, like, what do you have to say for yourself? No, <laughs> no like what, what's like- Justify it. Yeah, yeah, no, no, like what, like, is that like a very intentional thing? Is it just sort of a, a way that you've developed playing? Like, yeah, like- Oh, uh, yeah, I, I mean, uh, it, it's- <laughs> It comes from trying to intentionally channel nervous energy. Like right. I've always been a quite nervous person. Like uh, I remember when I was a kid, I used to shake back and forth like a lot when I was speaking excitedly. My my mother would say, "Stop, stop shaking," you know. Uh, and uh, so yeah, there's there's always been this sense that when the music is in in full throttle, that you know, you're kind of moving around a lot, and it, so it was, it was. It was natural that, like, my inherent nervous energy would sort of feed into that. Um, especially when you, when I was first playing, when like free jazz was more my ideal, and then later on when I started playing with the people in Bark, it it, it was um, a more more the the aesthetic be became more uh, precise and pinpoint and fragmented and. So it became good to know that you could actually edit all that free flow of energy and hmm. uh, use use more of your brain power to sort of uh, know when uh, to sort of fit phrases pieces together like jigsaws rather than just a f free flowing constant you know yeah, yeah. splurge of nervous <laughs> which, which can specifically in, in free jazz can be a, a big aesthetic in terms of like free jazz drumming for example tends to be quite like yeah. manic and kind of full on. It's yeah. a, a super well, gross well, generalization, yeah. but like, yeah. Well, that, that was my ideal at first. Yeah. When I first started playing, I was <laughs> listening to those records like, uh, you know, Meditations and Ascension and people like Rashid Ali. And mm. I, I don't, you know, and my, my, I had this kind of macho thing that I wanted to play and, until I was dead, basically. <laughs> <laughs> until I, I played so hard, you know, it was, it was like all, you know, my soul and my guts were just there all, mm. all over the kit. But <laughs> then when I started playing more with other people and they were they were feeding their own more of their own background in like uh rex and richard sort of knew more about john stevens and you know R richard had been in london and hmm. 
work with that, those kind of ideas. And, uh, you know, it was a case of playing and uh, uh, having those personal musical interactions whereby people were saying, you know, shut up, you're playing too much. <laughs> this doesn't need to be so, you know. Uh, and, it, you know, it kind of fed through. And then it was obvious when I listened back that, yeah, it was often better when it was less, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, less is more. And, uh, but I, I still kind of um, had this sense of when we were in, in, when the music was really moving that there was, there was this, not metronomic, but, you know, this fast kind of tempo to it. And that, that, that kind of thing of me, you know, making these gestures with, with, had this sense of the, the time ticking by really quickly, but I didn't want to, make all the hits yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know I wanted to stop so it was, it was just it kind of became this dance over the drums that you know, that's, you know possibly it's over mannered I don't, <laughs> I don't know it just just became it's what people always mention when they talk about my playing I, I, I didn't yeah but so, so yeah it was just it just became a way of self-editing of being more aware of space but but still keeping the dance yeah somehow. yeah uh, yeah so yeah, I quite like that idea because one of the things that I very much like about your playing is that 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 um, the density of gesture is still quite there. Like it isn't mm. less in the sense of like, which which mm. you can do like this sort of like, yeah, once, which is very nice. But like that kind of minimalism, I do appreciate. But I personally enjoy doing more the like frantic thing. But as you kind of put it there, like with with space and gesture, so it's not just like a, yeah. ah, it's like. <laughs> Yeah, or, 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 or although that 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 can work as well. And yeah, totally. You, you don't want to make hard and fast rules, and and maybe that way I just described of my playing doesn't really apply so much if the, if it, the music is, the pace is 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 slower and, and more contemplative. But hmm. but I mean uh, maybe it's best not to have that constant rushing <laughs> going on in your head. But uh, uh, but with with Bach, especially uh, after. Uh, when Paul Obermeyer joined, that 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 became what seemed to be most exciting about the music. That sort of uh, particle acceleration, yeah. smashing thing. So that that's I don't know. That's that's always seemed to be what what was most fundamental to my playing. Even though I do a lot of other more textural things as well. But, yeah. On the sort of back of that, like what? How do you think about? Like particularly if you're in a group like like Bark or something, or in in a fast paced, let's say particle accelerator, can think anything where you have these fast gestures that move between the group. How do you how do you engage with that kind of musical language while avoiding, um, I guess, Mickey Mousing would be a thing. Like like where like I do this sound and now you do the same sound. I do this sound. Yeah, like, like yeah. where they kind of mirror each other overtly. Like what? Um, yeah, I just just try and avoid that. Mm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, uh, I, I mean, yeah, you're aware of it that that you, you you can. I don't know. It's funny getting the balance between uh, over over listening, uh, in which you you kind of become hesitant about making your own kind of definite emphatic gesture at, at the risk of upsetting. What, yeah. <laughs> because you're listening so hard, you, so it's 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 always a really fine balance between asserting your own personality. And, and being part of the group, and it's not there aren't any hard and fast rules. So, uh, but but yeah, I mean I mean things like I, I mean you get that in, in jazz where where someone will do a sort of you know triplet phrase, and then the drummer will do da da yeah, da, yeah. da you know, and you know you uh, it gets predictable. So yeah. you you try and maybe avoid that or think of something else to do. But but you know on the other hand that that can also be appropriate. Just just don't mm. <laughs> just don't do it a lot so it becomes a, a mannerism. Um, yeah. uh, you know but but it's it's difficult. It's you know because obviously even the best of us play are boring <laughs> or predictable or uh, or cliched. So you know you can't always avoid it. You, just try. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and I think with that, like, I think a certain amount of, of acknowledgement of material or acknowledgement of phrase is, is useful. Obviously, like, it demonstrates listening, which is also, like, it's a, it's a, it, it increases intimacy. It's like, oh, I can tell you're listening to, like, like when someone repeats what you said, oh, that's, mm. I agree with what you just said. Like, it, it's a very, like, it's yeah. a grounding thing, but, like, it doesn't necessarily add more. So there's, like, a, an amount yeah. that's functional, but at the same time, as you said, can be aesthetically banal. Yeah. Where it's like it's like oh he's gonna do the oh he did the thing and <laughs> yeah. it's like so on the other hand you might want to just 
completely go against it or mm. uh, just in complete and utter contrast. But yeah, I, I mean, but I don't know. It's, it's, you can overthink it sometimes if the music's really working. You, you, you just go with your instincts and hopefully they seem to work. And Or sometimes you're very self-conscious. I'm, I'm going to change, um, you know, but yeah, I don't know. Mm. <laughs> it's, uh, I mean, it's an interesting one because like, much like we were talking earlier about like, like doing a lot of drum practice and how it manifests in playing, like I think some of this pseudo-philosophical, pseudo-conceptual manners of engaging or thinking about, like they're kind of there, but then when you're improvising in the moment, obviously you have to make, you make a decision and you do something. Yeah. So it, it's affected by this uh, previous uh, layers of consideration, but then in yeah. the moment you make one of those decisions. You're like, I will do that thing yeah. or I won't do that thing just because it, it happens, time goes and you need to do mm. the thing. But having that, um, having thought about these things and having thought about those edge cases and kind of permutations of that, I think influences like p potentially, uh, that might be overstepping, but like a richer, a richer uh, intentionality to the decision you make in the moment, whether it's subconscious or not. Like you're gonna do it and your gut will say, do this thing, but it, that itself is a reflection of the many ponderings and many I guess conversations <laughs> close to something like this like, like oh yeah. would we do a thing or not do a thing but like in yeah. the moment your your kind of brain picks one yeah. for you uh, yeah I have no philosophy or intellect about <laughs> improvising it's just been honestly to well yeah it's a lot of conversation over the years and a lot of arguing uh, well more in the early days than mm. now I mean but uh, just just learning practically and just by doing it a lot with other people and you just develop an instinct hopefully I mean but I tend not to overthink it I don't I don't yeah. <laughs> too much I don't I don't have any overall thoughts about its place in the universe yeah. you know? <laughs> or society I mean I, you know so it's a wonderful thing to do to you know make music that's never existed before with other other people so it's it's yeah, it's 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 it can be a really beautiful thing, but yeah, I, I just don't think about it much when I'm. That not sounds doing pretty it. philosophical, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah but maybe, maybe. <laughs> cool. Shall we uh, yeah, yeah. make some music that's yeah. never existed? Yeah. <laughs>
If you'd like to support the making of these videos, please join our Patreon. The link is in the description below. Thanks for watching. <laughs>